A founding Bundesliga member, 1860 Munich were regulars in Germany's top flight until the 2003-2004 season. Now, 1860, the first Munich side to win a Bundesliga in 1966, find themselves in the third division, having dropped as low as the fourth tier due to on and off the field issues. Before 1860's drastic fall, they spent 10 consecutive seasons in the Bundesliga from 1994, with that highlight for Deloen being their fourth place finish in the 99-2000 season, earning them a Champions League qualifier spot. Our goal today is to take over this sleeping giant in Germany's third tier and take them back to the top and make them the best team in Munich and the best team in Germany. So guys, here we are in game with 1860 Munchen. As you can see, they have won the Bundesliga once. They have won the DFB Pokal once as well. If I go over to here, you can see when they won it. So 1966 for the Bundesliga title, obviously, as long as England have been waiting for it to come home. And then two Pokal trophies as well. They've won a couple of other things, uh, competitions that don't necessarily exist anymore. The Regionella in 1918, uh, 1918, 2018, uh, as you can see, when they dipped all the way down into the fourth tier. But for the last couple of seasons, they've been in the third tier. So we are going to try and take them back to the Bundesliga at the very least. Um, this is the tactic that we are going to be running today. GYR's Thanos version 2. I uh, haven't used this one for quite a while, so it's going to be interesting to see how we get on. And this is how the team lines up in it. Obviously, I'm not too worried about this Roman playmaker having half a star. I think he's capable of doing it in uh, Tim Reader. He's definitely more of a defensive midfielder, um, not quite a Roman playmaker, but will make do for the first of the first season at the very least marco hiller the goalkeeper looks like a very good player especially for the third tier i think this guy is probably like if i had this guy in the premier league and i was a lower tier side i actually wouldn't be mad at it so the fact that he is here is a very good uh, very good player uh, we've also got jesper uh, verlat as well who looks like a pretty solid player other than the fact that he's six foot four and can't head a football can get up there has good composure and stuff like that but can't actually head it according to uh, sports interactive but again another good player in the team then up front we have this kind of guy julian uh, gatu uh looks like a pretty good player for the level uh 14 dribbling 14 first touch 14s in acceleration agility and pace as well so pretty solid uh even if he does have nine finishing so uh we'll see how he gets on as an inside forward on this uh left hand side but this is what the team looks like we're going to be running a 4-3-3 for this campaign um and obviously we do have the two competitions this season we have the third tier and we have have the dfb pokal obviously we go into the first round of the pokal that's not surprising that starts right at the start of the season but our opposition haven't been drawn yet and if we go into the league uh, there are some interesting ones in here obviously dortmund's second team cannot gain promotion freiburg's second team cannot gain promotion uh, so there's a couple of teams that we can kind of avoid here if we have a look at the season preview there you go we can see we are sixth placed in terms of the predictions dinamo dresden are pretty interesting as well sandhausen as well uh one of the relegated teams expected to do pretty well but the division's pretty stacked we're not actually predicted to go up um obviously there are the three relegated teams from last season to contend with uh so it's going to be an interesting season one to see how we do i have faith in g stanos a link to that will be down in the description as always um but let's see what happens in season number one We opened our Season 1 campaign with the DFB Pokal where we faced Bundesliga 2 side Hamburg at home. Jesper Verlag gave us the lead after a nicely worked set piece routine, but Hamburg were able to pull themselves level just before half time. We dominated large spells of the second half but couldn't find that needed breakthrough and got punished as the second tier side were able to score on the counter to take the lead and ultimately win the tie. This is a positive sign that we can play like this against teams of this caliber, but there is definitely bigger fish to fry this season. And that bigger fish to fry was the league as I was gunning for promotion to try and get us back into Germany's second tier. We opened our campaign with a nice win at home before suffering defeat in our first game on the road. But after that result, we were able to settle into a bit more of a rhythm, putting together a 10-game unbeaten run that consisted of six wins and four draws. Moving into the January transfer window, I felt like we needed some more firepower up top, so I added Argentine frontman Franco Sosa for just 80k. 
He went on to score 8 league goals in 14 matches after he signed, so I feel like that was worth every penny. Another key man for us this season was Joel Zwartz, who was our highest average rated player this season with a 7.17 across 30 matches, but he was also our joint top goal scorer. After the addition of Sosa, we seemed a bit more consistent in front of goal, putting teams away thanks to some more clinical finishing. There are lots of green in our schedule, but we weren't the best team in the league as Dynamo Dresden topped the league with 76 points, but we secured secured ourselves automatic promotion with a second place finish. I personally hate the playoff system in Germany, where if you're in a certain area, you play a team from the division below. I personally hate it, so I was glad to avoid it at all costs. Our board have given us a nice little transfer budget to make the step up to the second tier of 765k, and our wage budget has doubled as well. So let's see what we can pick up in the summer. So we're going to start on this page because there's been a lot of transfer business happen. As you can see, lots of wheeling and dealing. Several players coming in on free transfers. We've also picked up a couple of loans as well. I will touch on those uh, just to be sure. Looking at some of the freebies though, you can see the type of players that we're after. Arelaldo Philly comes in. Albanian Youth International despite being 28 now. Looks like a good little capable player. A little bit more in the mental attributes than some of the players that we have had last season. And he can play in three key positions and he's both footed as well. So that's a big pick up there. Uh, Paul Stolorski looks like another good addition for us in that right back spot. Doesn't necessarily have the crossing and dribbling that I'd like. But remember, we are a second tier team in Germany at this point. Other than that, pretty well rounded. Not spectacular, but a good player nonetheless. This is definitely much more of a step up in the central midfield position. Anas, I'm not going to attempt to say his name, uh, but a Dutch player coming in uh, looks like a much more creative option than what we have had in that spot previously. I think he could be a very good Mezala for us again, coming in on a free transfer from Den Bosch. Uh, then Lafias, uh, Lafis, maybe is how we say this guy's name. Uh, Cypriot International, 31 years of age, 62 caps, three goals for the Cypriot national team. Big centre back to come in at six foot one and play as our left sided centre half. I quite like him. Very, very good attributes for what you need as a centre back. Then we've got uh, Papella, again, creative in that midfield. Definitely a bit more brave and aggressive than the last one, but again, 15 tackling for him. He's probably going to play as that roaming playmaker there because he's got 12 passing, which I think is pretty solid for the level. A DR Congo international at 23 as well. And then the last player on a free transfer is Papado Antonio Antonios Papadopoulos, who comes in from Dortmund. Again, another centre half. He's six foot one. He's right-footed this time, so you can see where we've really tried to improve us. And then we've got several loans coming in. Um, the one I'm going to touch on, as I've had him before in saves, is this man, Skyvink. I think he's going to be an absolute baller at this level. He is just an absolute truck. He does really, really well. Big fan of him. Hopefully, he can go for uh, strength to strength with us. If I quick pick without restriction, the best 11, you can see some of these players that have come in. Obviously, some of the loans, we've got uh, four loanies in our starting 11, uh, as well as a couple of our own players, of course, coming in from those transfers, uh, mainly looking at the defense, to be perfectly honest with you. But happily, uh, we're happy with the improvements that we have made in this team. Um, that whole new midfield, I'm intrigued to see how they all do there. Uh, and obviously, Vink as the main goal scorer up front. If we go into the competitions tab, we are in two competitions again we have the league and the german cup to worry about the german cup is not going to be a priority yet once we get into the bundesliga then it will start to become more of a priority but at the moment i just think we need to concentrate on getting ourselves back into the bundesliga and speaking of the division the bundesliga 2 schalke won it last year they got themselves promoted unlike in real life this year um poor schalke if we look at the season preview we are predicted to finish one but last 50 to 1 to win the title so the odds aren't terrible but stuttgart got relegated Augsburg got relegated so stuttgart are going to be heavy 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 favorites to go back up uh, with the likes of Dennis Seaman, Zagadou still here, Jurassi still knocking about so they have a very very good team obviously the likes of Hamburg are still pretty good, Hanover etc uh, in this division so we're going to have to see what we can do, survival mid-table finish is where we're going for this season let's see what we can do in season number two
As always, we opened the season with the DFB Pokal first round and this year, we managed to make it out of the first round. We were drawn alongside St Pauli, a team from our division, and managed to swat them aside with ease, winning the game 4-1. But then in the second round, we couldn't continue that form, suffering a 3-1 defeat at home to Darmstadt. But our main goal was survival in the Bundesliga 2, and that is something that we achieved relatively early in the campaign. There are some of German football's fallen giants in this league, so I knew that some of these fixtures would be difficult this campaign, as wins were pretty hard to come by in the first half of the season. Last year's player of the season, Joel Swartz, made the step up and topped our goal scoring charts for a second campaign in a row, scoring just under a goal every other game in the league. Finances were limited in the January transfer window, so we didn't add any new faces during that time, but from February onwards, it seemed like we really turned a corner. We won 12 of our 17 games in 2025, which saw us catapulted up the table, but thanks to the poor start, we missed out on the playoffs narrowly by just two points. But this team really did punch above their weight this year and sometimes you can get promoted a little bit too fast. The board were happy with our progress this season and rewarded me with a £2 million transfer budget and a £40,000 a week increase in our wage budget. So I think our board will be expecting a big year next season. So we're going to start on the transfers page again and the turnover of players has yet again been quite big. Obviously, we've been trying to get players in on freebies uh, just to try and, you know, kind of give us as much bolstering as possible and kind of increasing that level and you will probably see this turnover and I'm sure you guys who have done lower league saves will have the exact same thing high turnover of players until you get into the top couple of divisions obviously if you're in England if you get into the top division in the Bundesliga here uh, then you'll start to see a little bit more consistency but for now we picked up several players on free transfers I'm just going to run through them super quick uh, we got Bass here coming in as our new left back uh, what we've tried to do this time around is rely on more of our own players and less free transfers to be perfectly honest with you he comes in from go ahead eagles to be a new left back for us this guy comes in from tunis as another option for us on that right hand side high flare high agility uh, high acceleration as well is pretty interesting on him he's also left footed so suits being an inside forward just that little bit better uh, martin picard again another good player for us Op options on both wings natural on both sides again you can never have too many of these utility players to play especially when they come in on free transfers lee hunju comes in for from Bayern Munich. Yes, another creative player to come in the midfield. Um, I think he could potentially play as a central midfielder for us as a Mazala, or if we needed him, he could play out on that left-hand side. I definitely think he has all the attributes to do it. Uh, another uh, player coming in from Bayern is always going to be good fun as well. We've got Daniel Ramirez coming in as well, 33 years of age. It always does help to have some of these veterans in the team, um, despite him only having seven leadership. Having been there and done it in a couple of areas is probably going to be helpful. Uh, Ivan comes in as our new goalkeeper, 16 aerial reach on this six foot five monster coming in from Croatia. Um, has all the good attributes for a goalkeeper that I do quite like, but other than that, nothing too busy to write home about. I think he is a good little player. Torben Rhein comes in from Bayern Munich as well. Again, another lad who's never going to ever play for Bayern. Very strong left foot, very strong right foot, can go either way in that Mazala spot in our central midfield. This is going to be a player that hopefully we can keep in the team for a long period of time, especially coming in on a free. And Mario Mendez is the last one of the free transfers, coming in as our new striker, 28 years of age, from Uruguay. Uh, sorry, Uruguayan even. Uh, where was his last club? In Argentina. Okay, he comes in from Argentina. So looks like a good player um, attribute-wise. So we're going to have to see what we can do with there. We've got several players coming in on loan as well. Franco Carboni comes in from Inter Milan. He is a very good pickup for us to play as left back. If you've not seen him in this year's game, definitely would recommend. Luka Vaskovic is again another phenomenal player that Tottenham have signed in real life. Another big Croatian, 18 years of age, six foot four. He comes in on loan for the season. Uh, Winsley Botelli again on loan for the year as another striker option from Gladbach. And then from Hoffenheim we've signed Luca. I'm not going to butcher his last name. Another good defensive midfielder option. So we've tried to get more of our own players in this year. And hopefully, if we quick pick without restriction, you can kind of see that. Obviously, we only have a couple of players uh, getting into that starting 11. I'll probably put Mendes there as that striker. He's only just come in, so hasn't necessarily learned the system yet. But this is how we are set up. I'm really, really happy with that midfield. Ryan and Lee Hyun Ju coming in from Bayern Munich are going to take over those Mazala spots and really look to push us on. We've got some good options in several positions now. I'm happy with the strength and the depth of the team. I think... 
this could be the year that we do try and push on. We do have the same competitions again, but the board expectation this year is for us to finish in the top half of the table. Hertha Berlin, Greuterfurt, my boys, got relegated. Hamburg are the favourites to win the division, though. If you saw my live save over on twitch.tv forward slash her game in UK, uh, we had a bad time with Hamburg and actually ended up taking Greuterfurt up into the uh, the, hot, the top division uh, in my network save with Mr. Murph FM. Um, so Kaiser Schlauten promoted as well. That's going to be very, very interesting. Rottweiss Essen, another one of these fallen giants in Germany. There's loads of them in this uh, in this tier if you want to come and have a, have a go with some of them. I want us to get promoted this season, so that does mean a top two finish. Let's see what happens when we get to simulating. Season three was all about giving the board that return on investment and getting this club back into the Bundesliga, but it took us a little while to find our feet. But once we did, we were a problem for everyone in the division as Dusseldorf found out the hard way as we smashed them on the road with a 7-1 win. This year, we were much better in the opening half of the season and that was largely because of striker Maro Mendes who transitioned brilliantly after arriving from South America. He had 29 goals in all competitions and secured himself the league's golden boot by a massive 9 goals. After the winter break, we were nothing short of fantastic, only failing to score points on one occasion and finished the year with 11 game unbeaten run to see us secure the league title by 10 points and look at that goal difference compared to Darmstadt in second so you can see that we'd improved as a team this year and we used our amazing momentum in the league to progress in the Pokal as well we defeated lower league opposition in the first couple of rounds before dominating a 10-man Kaiser Schlauten in the third round that meant that we made it to the quarterfinals for the first time in this save where we came up against Hanover however this is where the wheels fell off in the cut run as we couldn't really get close to them losing 2-1 on the day but promotion was the main thing for us this season and we definitely achieve that we have been given another 1.2 million pound transfer budget this summer and a huge extra a hundred thousand pounds in our wage budget so let's get this team bundesliga ready so guys before we kick off season four i have to start here because the board have decided to build a brand new stadium this is our current stadium the 1860 play in in real life in munich um it looks okay it looks a little bit tired but you can see here the capacity is 15,000 seats or 15,000 people the new stadium's got 21,000 seats so we're spending a an exorbitant amount of money to move to a stadium with just with just 6,000 extra seats, but at the moment we are currently renting this stadium. So hopefully not giving 9% of our gate receipts could be quite useful. But it's an interesting, it's an interesting stance from the board to go for a stadium right off the rip. But we'll we'll, we'll let them we'll let them do their thing. We've been out in the transfer market and looked to uh, improve as much as we can. We've hit the loan market pretty hard, uh, as well as bringing in a couple of players for some actual money. We've spent £750,000 in this transfer window uh, with no real major outgoings yet again. This is going to be my favourite signing of the save so far. Ilyax Moriba, the former La Masia wonder kid. I guess he was probably touted as. He's bounced around a lot since being at Barcelona. He's now at 1860 in this save, and I love this guy i think he's brilliant he has everything i need for him to be a good mez for me in this tactic and the fact that we've picked him up on a free transfer after his contract at rb leipzig came to an end is chef's kiss we've gone out and we started using our new gen wonder kid finder i'll leave a link to that in the description as well to pick up this young brazilian he's six foot five guys but he's got 16 dribbling good natural fitness good determination good passing i don't know how much he's going to play right off the rip but we picked him up on a free transfer as you can see and he's now valued at 1.2 to 2.8 million he's left footed as i said he's six five so he's going to be in a bit bit obscure a bit awkward on that right hand side but we're going to train and we're going to see how francisco can get on some of the players that we did spend some money on 400k on this man uh Leonar, uh leandro avalos he again high high dribbling attribute at 18 looks very good uh not necessarily the quickest can accelerate and is agile and got good balance but definitely needs some work to be bundesliga ready but he only cost us 400k and we went over again in argentina to pick up this guy funes from uh was that from uh river it was for 200k 
Again, looking like a much more first team ready option for us on that right, uh, on that left hand side. Sorry, right footed, uh, 20 years of age, uh, five foot nine as well. Looks pretty good. Then we fit the loan market. As I said, Duric comes in from Serbia from a Red Star. My boys, Red Star. Gotta love, gotta give them, gotta give them a shout out. Uh, we've also got this guy in from Galatasaray again. Some of these guys are going to be squad players. Some of these guys are going to be starters. Uh, Redmond, I think, could be a good little baller for us on this left-hand side. Uh, and then we also have picked up uh, Bogard from Hoffenheim to be a new centre-back option for us. The loans, for the most part, have been free. Uh, Bogard did cost us 145k. So we have kind of spent most of our budget, but we are kind of balanced. The overall balance of the club is doing pretty well. And if we go into the tactic and quick pick without restriction this is how we are set up for the season uh defensively we are all loans ladies and gentlemen but i think we do have some very good options for us in that midfield i'm really intrigued to see how moriba does i found that over the last couple of fms he's not been as good as he has been in years gone by so we're gonna have to see how he does get on but this is gonna be the team going into our first campaign back in the Bundesliga obviously I've mentioned the Pokal we're not too fussed about that just yet uh, I want a couple of years getting grounded in the Bundesliga and then maybe we can try and win it Bayern's domination continues in game uh, no unbeaten season for Leverkusen here at the time of recording they are still unbeaten and we are predicted to finish stone dead last uh, ourselves and Darmstadt both 500 to 1 to win the league title by Munich or odds on I just want to stay in the division and avoid the playoffs so 15th or better I will be ecstatic with hopefully we can get that done in this season our first back in the Bundesliga. Our goal this season was Bundesliga survival and we got our campaign off to a flyer going unbeaten in our opening five league matches including wins at home against Dortmund, Union Berlin and Hoffenheim. Naturally, we'd suffer some heavy defeats this season, but we had to make ourselves solid at home, and that is something that we were able to achieve winning five of our eight home matches with just one loss coming against Bayern Munich. Mauro Mendes topped our goal-scoring charts for a second season in a row, with the Uruguayan netting 11 times in 33 Bundesliga appearances. A former Bayern Munich player who made the step up was Torben Rhein, who provided us with 7 goals and 6 assists in all competitions from centre midfield, and he looks like he can definitely play at this level. After the winter break, we found wins difficult to come by, but it seemed like the teams had figured us out a little bit more, but we'd done enough to secure Bundesliga football for season number 5. In fact, we performed well above expectations this season and secured a 10th place finish in our first year back in the Bundesliga. And in the Pokal, we made our second successive quarterfinal, beating lower league opposition before travelling to face Freiburg. These lads actually finished fifth in the Bundesliga and qualified for the Europa League, so it's no surprise that we lost this one on the road. But the big thing for us was the Bundesliga money kicking in, as even if we finished last this year, we would have got awarded £26 million. That influx of cash meant the board gave me just over 9 million to spend this summer and we saw our wage budget almost double and our brand new stadium will be ready for us next season so that is a nice addition so guys we got active active in this transfer market as you can see lots of players coming into the club but we haven't actually broken the bank on all of it 16.25 million spent to bring in lots of these players the wonder kid finder filter has been out in force, ladies and gents. This is one of the guys that we've picked up. Leandro Treverio, he comes in from Argentina for four million pounds. Could rise to six, probably will rise to six, but he looks like a very good prospect for us. Good first touch, good passing, good technique. High flair and determination, as well as agility and balance. Mwah. Wonder Kid Finder filter, thank you, thank you. I will leave a link to it in the description, as always, so that you guys can go and use it and find yourselves gems like this for dirt dirt cheap we also picked up this guy from red star bogdan milosolovic milosolovic is how i'm probably gonna butcher that serbians i know you're there let me know how i said that one in the comment section but he looks like an elite tier defender six foot six 19 years of age 16 jump and reach 20 determination 16 for heading 16 for tackling he looks brilliant i'm sure we will be able to sell this guy off for a massive profit 3.5 million pounds for him florian spiradon comes in high agility high acceleration high crossing attributes on this guy he is right footed 
Um, but I'm going to train him to play on the left-hand side because I think him cutting in could be quite dangerous with his 15 dribbling and high acceleration and agility and flair like that. So we are going to train him to play on that left-hand side. Coming in from Romania, 10 youth caps, four goals for the under-21s, despite the fact that he is 19 years of age. Again, wonder kid find a filter going in OP. Marcel Schuen comes in as our goalkeeper option for us. Again, Good reflexes on this guy. Good uh, mentals as well, which is really nice to see. He is 34 years of age, but you can never have too much experience, especially in between the sticks. I quite like that personally. He came in for £2 million from Darmstadt. Back to the Wonder Kid Finder. We're back in Eastern Europe. This time we go into Bosnia for this guy, Boris. Uh, again, he looks very good, uh, doesn't he? Six foot two, 19 years of age. Two caps and one goal for Bosnia. The full men's national team, good on both feet. Again, I think him and the Serbian are going to be a very good partnership um, at the back. He came in for two million pounds. There you go. Sorry, I'm on the wrong line. Isaac Paredo comes in. Look at this guy as a striker. Has all the attributes to be fantastic as well. He came in from Peru. Four caps one goal for the Peru uh, full national team 17 technique is brilliant to see on a striker as well so looking forward to seeing what he can do when he moves into the team and we also picked up uh, Bogard we activated his loan uh, purchase fee so we picked him up for what was that 700k 500k on this guy Jao Victor again another new gen coming in looks like he could be an option uh, only an option again another six foot five Brazilian you don't see too many of these guys and then we went massive in the free transfer markets lots of players that I'm going to talk about here uh, Lucas Sucic is a good option uh, for us in that midfield. Uh, we like him. And we also picked up Calvin Ramsey from Liverpool to play as our new right back. So if we go into the tactic, we are going to be pinning these players in because I think they can kind of do the business for us. Spiridon, as I mentioned, we are training him to play over this side. Trivero is definitely much more of an attacking midfielder. We're going to get him nailed in in this Mazala position. I think he is going to dominate in this area because he has all the attributes to do so. So fingers crossed he can do that. And then we've got the big two lads as i said uh the the bosnian alongside the serbian as center backs i think they could be very interesting but we are quite new gen heavy i admit that we are quite new gen heavy at the moment so we don't necessarily have an abundance of uh, of experience but we're gonna have to see what we can do let's see if we can win some stuff with you some young kids uh dfb poco again we're not too worried about it but we should progress through that first round uh, in the bundesliga the board wants us to um avoid relegation we are not the worst team in the division anymore 300 to 1 to win the league so we've obviously improved quite considerably in the media's eyes over the course of the summer um but this is where we want to start ramping things up we finished 10th last season i want to finish in the top half so ninth or above and ideally push towards those european places if we can so let's get to simulating and see what we can do in this season i'm expecting a good one We had lots of player turnover this summer and our early season form suffered as a result of that as we had several players transitioning to life in Germany. We suffered four defeats in our opening six games but we did show what we are capable of by thumping Bayern Munich 4-1 at home with new gen Isaac Paredo netting an impressive brace. After the first couple of months of the season we did really settle down and moved into the winter break winning four of our last five fixtures including a 3-2 win on the road at Leverkusen. Our main man this season was Florian Spiridon who not only learned to play on the left hand side of the pitch but also provided us with eight goals and 13 assists in all competitions and is now branded as a wonder kid by the media. And Spiridon was one of three players that we had in the NXGN list of top 50 wonder kids so it's clear my filter still works is a treat again as i mentioned i'll leave a link to it down below after the festive period we were more consistent than ever before and really looked like one of the better teams to emerge from the middle of the pack this campaign but our inexperience showed towards the end of the season suffering four defeats over the final two months to narrowly miss out on those european places we finished the season in ninth with 52 points and we needed 54 to make that top seven but i'm sure we will make it in there next year this season also saw us make the Pokal quarterfinals for a third successive campaign where this time we faced Eintracht Frankfurt at home for a spot in the semis. But this year our young side were able to get the job done thanks to a superb second half performance which saw us score four goals in a clinical outing in front of goal to progress into the next rank. And this is where we face the juggernaut that 
is Bayern Munich. In this world, Thomas Tuchel is still the manager and rotated in this one, but Bayern proved too strong, netting goals from Amadou Onana, Matthias Tau, and Harry Kane on their way to securing yet another league and cup double. But the signs are there that this squad are capable of making this step up as long as we can hold on to some of our key talents who are wanted by some of Europe's elite clubs. The Bundesliga money continues to roll in as we have another £12 million to spend this summer and yet another £100,000 a week added to our wage budget. Right guys, we've had our first major outgoing of this save going into season number six. We've sold one of those players that we found on the Wonderkid filter for a smaller fee. We've sold him, we've got him back on loan. It's Leandro Treverio. I told you he wouldn't be here for long after coming in from Argentina. He is now a Arsenal player, technically. We had him for one year, one year in the Bundesliga. He didn't even play that well. We paid four million pounds for him. We sold him to Arsenal for 9.5 and he's now back on loan for the season. He is listed as a wonder kid, but Arsenal paid the money. 9.5 million, we couldn't say no. It will potentially probably rise to 11.5 million, which again allowed us to be active in the transfer window. We didn't lose him for this year. He comes back in on loan, but I feel that could be a sign of things to come though. We did go out and spend some money though. Again, looking at the new gens, kind of new gen heavy, this particular save to kind of turn over the revenue that we need to. Presson comes in uh, as a defensive midfield player for us. 16 passing on him, definitely much more suited to being that Roman playmaker that we need. We need to train him in it, but he's got good positioning, good teamwork as well. Obviously with that four star potential. Coming in for nine million pounds from NEC. From Cremonese, we picked up this guy, Andreas Young Dahl um, as another goalkeeper for us. You need to keep replenishing these goalkeepers, especially considering some of the ones that we have been signing are definitely more seasoned than some of the others. Uh, Danish youth and international, six foot five, good aerial reach, 17 for one on ones is really, really nice to see as well. Uh, he comes in for five million pounds. Jaden uh, Candelaria comes in as our new left back, um, can also play centre back potentially. Uh, 15 acceleration is quite nice on him, but I don't like centre backs at 5'11", so I think he's definitely going to be destined for that left back spot he comes in from final at 8.5 million pounds for him and Mamade uh, Diambu comes in as another midfield option for us can play in both of these midfield option uh, midfield positions for us definitely probably more of the defensive mindset but again I think we have some good additions here but I told you this would happen with some of these players we did manage to keep hold of our two center backs which I'm really really happy with and these are the players that we're going to be pinning in these positions this season I think we can really push on. Spiridon, as I mentioned, is now adjusted to that life on the left-hand side. Definitely feels more comfortable. His dribbling has gone up as well. He wants a new deal. We will try and give him that uh, because I feel he could be a mainstay at this club as long as we can hold on to him. But these are the players that we're going to be pinning in their positions to make sure that they get the game time this campaign. And speaking of this campaign, again, we have the same two competitions at the moment. Until we break into that top seven and we get some European football, we're just going to have the same two to worry about, which is pretty good from a fixtures perspective. Obviously, Bayern continues to win the league yet again, league and cup doubles. But we've improved again in terms of the odds makers, down to 200 to 1 now. We're still in that mid-table gap. Um, but the teams at the top are really, really good in this division. Bayern are very good. Dortmund and Leipzig are very good. Leverkusen seem to fluctuate a lot in uh, in this save that I've seen so far. But hopefully we can start to break out the middle of this middle of the pack. We finished in the top half of the table last season. I really want European football next year. So hopefully with these additions, the extra influx of cash from Arsenal, we can get the job done. So we mentioned Arsenal and I have to tell you, Arsenal are on my list. Not only did they sign Leonardo from us in the summer window, they snatched Bogdan Milosevic from us on deadline day. It did see another £9 million come into the club, but to be honest, I'd have rather have kept the big Serbian centre-half. We were visibly weaker this season, and you could see that instantly looking at our results over the first half of the campaign. We only managed to win five of our first 16 matches going into the winter break, and we suffered another loss of personnel. First up was the departure of Zhao Victor, who left us for Porto for £3.2 million, and he was followed out the door by our new-gen centre-back Boris Karnic, who joined Werder Bremen for just five million pounds. We did add a new defender of our own in this window as we signed Ignacio Funes from Racing Club in Argentina, but we were definitely worse off for the exchange for the time being. After the winter break, we went through really hot and cold patches months at a time. January was bad for us, but then we went unbeaten in February. 
We then lost every single game in March before closing out our season with a seven game unbeaten run. I didn't see the progress that I wanted this season and we regressed slightly into a 10th place finish with 46 points and a negative goal difference. But that is something that I am almost exclusively blaming on Arsenal. Our uninspiring season spilled over into the Pokal as well after a commanding win in the first round, we lost 4-3 to second tier side Hansa Rostock in the second round. This was the season to forget for us, but we still have some talented players at this club, but this summer sees us have zero in our transfer budget, so it could be a rough one. Okay, so I do have to say some funds did kick in. The board did give us a little bit more money uh, to spend. So we have gone out and spent some of it, but we've kind of got... I told you this would kind of happen. We've kind of slowed down a little bit in terms of some of the players that were... The numbers aren't there. We're kind of looking for quality over quantity now. Um, and we really... I, I think we found it here. Uh, Sterego comes in. I, I don't know if you've seen this guy from Singal. And he is fantastic. And always seems to be available as a good centre-back for us. Um, he is 5'11", so it does kind of go against my rule. But he was on a free transfer. Uh, so we picked him up for free from Singal. And then the players that we did spend some money with. We'll start on Axel. Axel... Atum is a real player coming in from Estudantes again in Argentina. We've gone over and raided them. Uh, Argentinian Youth International, 23 caps for the under-20s, uh, including four goals. So he definitely has something about him. But hasn't actually played loads in Argentina. He'll probably play more than that for us this season. He came in for £8.5 million. And the Wonderkid Finder filter was out in full force again. Yassin Khalifi comes in to be our new right winger. He has electric physicals ladies and gentlemen 16 for acceleration and balance he also has 18 for agility as well high determination so you know he will improve wonder kid finder filter again op um if we quick pick without restriction our best 11 this is kind of how we're set up this year but obviously we will be putting khalifi in that position there so again we are pretty new gen heavy um isaac Paredo, for all of his attributes hasn't actually provided me with a, a huge amount of goal scoring to be honest 12 and 17 in two seasons in the bundesliga not great for a player of his attributes but we're pretty well balanced i like our goalkeeper he's very good iliax mariba again obviously i do like him as well very very good player for us but we're kind of well balanced we're pretty young no superstars in this team which could potentially be a problem the players that i did have that are superstars now apparently play in north london which is super super irritating competitions wise again we have the same two feels like i'm saying it over and over we are ex the board are expecting us to avoid a relegation battle 150 to 1 to win the division now so again we are getting better but we're not taking these big strides i want to see us in that pack alongside some of the 50 to ones like freiburg hoffenheim frankfurt gladbach cologne i want to see us in that realm um, and to do that, we really need to push on this time around. So hopefully that is something we can do in season number seven. Bloody hell, season seven. Let's get it. This season had a slow start, drawing our first game of the season at home before losing away to Bayern. But I guess that got that one out of the way early. After that loss, we really cranked up a gear or two, especially at home, with us winning every single home game after that until the winter break. Our top goal scorers this season were Isaac Paredo and Yassin Khalifi, who both had 17 goals apiece in all competitions, but I'd really expect a bit more from Paredo, so I might have to look to move him on over the summer. Florian Spiridon continues to develop into a wonderful footballer, scoring five goals for us this season, but also providing us with 10 assists in in all competitions. He's now valued at 32 to 41 million pounds, so not bad for an initial 3.7 million pound investment. After the winter break, we were rampant in the league, going unbeaten throughout February and March to see us really climb up the table. As always, we finished the season strong with three wins and a draw, which saw us finally achieve that sixth place finish, meaning we'd be playing in the Europa League next season. It's taken longer than I'd have liked, but I'm hoping we can use that as a springboard to really push on towards a Bundesliga title. So it was job done in the league, but we also had a stunning run in the cup this year as well. 
We defeated a non-league side in the first round before getting our own back on Hansa Rostock for last year's cup exit in that second round. That set up a very difficult third round tie against Bayern Munich, but at least we were at home for this one. Axel Aram gave us the lead in the first half, volleying home from a Khalifi cross, but Bayern were able to equalise in the second half through Amadou Onana. The game went into extra time where the home crowd roared us back into the lead on the night, getting our second goal in the 105th minute. And that is how the scores remained, meaning we knocked out the 22-time Pokal winners and moved on into the quarterfinals. Here we came up against Borussia Mönchengladbach and we hit them with a bit of a smash and grab in this one, nicking a 2-1 win from just four shots on target to move into the semi-finals. We were drawn at home in this one as we entertained Stuttgart, but this one was the most one-sided of semi-finals I've seen in a long time, with us romping to a comfortable 4-0 win whilst restricting Stuttgart to just a one shot off target all game. So we moved into the Pokal final for the first time and we came up against Eintracht Frankfurt. This game was a bit of a snooze fest with neither side able to find a breakthrough in the opening 90 minutes or the additional 30 minutes of extra time. This meant they would be settled via penalty shootout where our players slotted penalty after penalty until our goalkeeper Andreas Jungdahl came up clutch with a massive save giving Federico Perea the chance to win us the trophy. And he did just that, sending the goalkeeper the wrong way to see us win our first DFB Pokal since 1964. That result capped the best performance in this rebuild so far, and the board have given me a transfer budget of £28 million to really attack this summer transfer window as we step into continental football for the first time. Starting as always for this season on the transfers page, we've had some key outgoings this time around as well. £24.5 million pounds of it in actual fact. Mamadi Diambu has gone to Eintracht Frankfurt for £17 million. Pounds. Now, this is probably going to go up to £22 million pounds as well. And that much money is too much to turn away for a player that we signed for £2.5 million. Pounds. I'm sorry, guys. He's had two good seasons with us in the Bundesliga. And when Frankfurt come in and say £17 million, pounds, he's good. Is he that good? I don't know. That money is very valuable to us. We also sold uh, Siad as well over to Krasnodar in Russia. Um, he had a good time with us, but uh, £4.5 million pounds for him, sorry, was too much to say no to. And Prasim, one of the new gens that we did sign, never really hit the heights of the sort of level that we were looking for. We've taken a bit of a loss on him, uh, £6 million pound loss on him, but ultimately, I don't think he was going to get into the team. You don't want unhappy players at your club. So we went out and we spent some money. Let's organise these by the most expensive and work our way down. Uh, Larin Berger comes in as a midfielder for a 17 passing, 16 technique. Good positioning on him as well. He is short, but he's 20 years of age and he's been capped by the Austrian full national team. So I think he's a very good player. Uh, you can see he's got that four and a half star potential ability as well. Um, I think a very good player for this level. Really looking forward to seeing what he can do. Came in from Rapid Vienna for £7.5 million. Pounds. We also signed a striker from Brazil, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes, we've signed one. Lele is how I'm going to say his name. He's going to come in and hopefully take us to another level up front. 16 finishing on him, 16 off the ball, 16 technique, 16 for agility and balance, and 17 on acceleration. He is going to be a handful this season. Looks good on the ball, uh, looks tricky. He came in for £5.5 million. Pounds. David Gonzalez comes in from AC Milan as well. Uh, one player goes out in that defence mid field position you look to replace him he's capped by venezuela at full international level despite only being 21 17 technique on him is really really nice to see good passing as well definitely roaming playmaker vibes kenji sato comes in from japan uh, yokohama marinos as a left back for a 16 acceleration 16 pace good stamina looks like a very good player always helps signing japanese players for merchandising reasons 13 caps for the japanese national team he is five foot five though so uh Maybe we will concede some far post headers. Who knows? Vincent Follener comes in. I'm looking at playing him as a central midfielder, as a Mazala, because I think he can definitely do that. I don't necessarily think he's going to be the best striker. Has very good physicals, pretty solid mentals as well. Has the technique to learn to play as a Mazala. And that is, as you can see, we are starting to train him already in that position. So hopefully he can learn that and push us on to the next level. Um, we also signed this guy for £2 million. Again, another Colombian youth international 
channel. Uh, six foot three, 16 jumping reach, good heading, has all the main attributes for a good center half and that five star potential ability. You can see the types of players that we're looking for here, guys. Uh, Lucas comes in as well. Uh, again, can play in three key positions for us. Czech international at 19 years of age. Again, looks like a good prospect uh, for 900K at the very least. And Libertad, uh, uh, we signed this guy from Libertad. 19 jumping reach on a guy who's six foot five. He is a center back all day long. He is not a left back. We will be playing him at centre-back as uh, Rodrigo Escobar. But we're kind of taking the money that we're spending and tr kind of trying it in a lots of different areas. If we go into the team, this is how we're going to pin players in this uh, this season. Lele is going to come in up front. Follina, as I said, is going to be training as a Mazala. Um, we do pin Escobar in as a centre-back for us. Uh, and Berger there as the roaming playmaker. Uh, he can't really play the role, but 17 passing. He's going to be so damn good. He is already listed as a wonder kid so looking forward to seeing what these four players can do if this guy doesn't at least score five headers this season i think we failed from set pieces to be perfectly honest competitions wise though this year we actually have lots of different things on the go we made it into europe for the first time so we have the europa league to contend with but we also as pokal winners have the super cup so we take on Bayern munich there if we take a look at the bundesliga though hopefully we've climbed into that range of uh, area that we wanted to be we have we are 50 to 1 to win the title this time around alongside Gladbach and Cologne but now that group have taken a bit of a jump they're now 33 to 1 to win the title looks like teams are slowly reigning Bayern Munich in um, Leipzig did win it a year ago but um, yeah it's going to be interesting to see what we can do this time around and we have European football so it's going to be a very hectic season lots of fixtures so let's see if this squad can handle it As last season's Pokal winners, we kicked things off with a German Super Cup where we took on league winners by Munich. We got off to a flyer in this one as summer signing Lele banked his first goal on his debut for the club, tapping home from close range. However, Bayern were of course being Bayern and leveled the game from the spot in the second half with Matthias Tell getting on the score sheet. And that's how the game stayed until full time and considering there is no extra time in this competition, the game went straight to penalties. Usually this is where you'd expect Bayern to dominate but they failed to convert their first three penalties of the shootout with us remaining calm under pressure to win the DFL. Super Cup 3-1 on penalties. But sadly, that wasn't momentum that we could carry into the rest of the competitions this season because we actually had a pretty poor campaign. We suffered defeat on the road in the second round of the Pokal to Heidenheim to see one of the worst trophy defences in history. And after a four-game unbeaten start in the league, things slowly started to turn sour, with inconsistency being our largest contributing factor. This could be down to the extra added fixtures of the Europa League, but we'll talk about that competition in a bit. Key players for us this season included Brazilian striker Lele, who arrived in the summer and scored 32 goals in all competitions and picked up the Bundesliga Golden Boot. And Yassin Khalifi was our top man for assists this season, providing 15 in all competitions. Moving into 2031, we did right the ship a little bit through January, February and March, but the wheels did fall off towards the end of the season, with us suffering defeats in four of our final five games. It will come as no surprise that we didn't make the progress in the Bundesliga that I was looking for and achieved a 7th place finish, which does mean that we have qualified for the Europa Conference League next season. And speaking of Continental Cups, I think we acquitted ourselves really well in our first season in a European competition. In the league phase, we managed to win 5 of our 8 matches to finish on 14 points and 11th in the table, meaning we'd move into the knockout playoff rounds. Here we take on AZ from Holland and face the away leg first as this is where our inexperience at this level was playing for all to see as we lost the game 1-0 but failed to register a single shot on target. Luckily for us back in Germany, we had our shooting boots firmly on as we managed to overturn that first leg deficit. However, in the 83rd minute, AZ scored again to take the game to extra time where we left it a bit late but Torben Rhein finally found the breakthrough in the 120th minute, firing home from outside of the area. That meant that we moved into the round of 16 where we would take on Red Bull Salzburg, a team we drew with in the league phase. This time we were at home in the first leg and we were completely outclassed from start to finish with the Austrian side running out 4-2 winners on the night. So we had an uphill task in the away leg and that was also one that we clearly weren't up for as we slumped to a 1-0 defeat to see our European campaign come to an end. After the season started so well with a Super Cup win over Bayern, I can't help but to be disappointed 
disappointed with how we got on, but I guess we have to remember where we've come from in this save. Over the summer, we have another smaller transfer budget of £9 million, which is crazy considering how sustainable we are as a club right now. So guys, transfers for season number nine. Yes, we are still progressing quite nicely with this one. But this is going to be a long video, so I appreciate all of you guys who are still here at this point. We've had one major outgoing. Um, Al Aswad has gone over to Damage um, for £10.5 million. It's allowed us to go a little bit more aggressive in the transfer market. We sold him for 10.5, and we spent it straight away on Johan Bakayoko to come in. He is a natural on both wing positions, can also be deployed up front if needed. He's consistent. I like him as a player this time around. He hasn't actually played in abundance for RB Leipzig in this time, uh, this save so we're happy to pick him up 10.25 million pounds seems like a good exchange of funds we also picked up this guy javier uh, uh ray uh he will be our backup goalkeeper for the season at 22 years of age i think um or we could pin him in i'm not really sure on what we're going to do yet he's valued at 43 oops 43 to 52 million pounds and we paid 1.9 million pounds for him so he definitely has some pr uh, potential by the looks of things Maybe we should play him. Maybe we should play him. 1.9 million pounds for him, though. And the last player that we signed is from Newell's Old Boys. It is this guy, Romaro Roland Martinez. Uh, again, another player who is technically a central attacking midfielder. We're going to rein him back in to play him as a Mazala. Um, again, looking like a real creative option for us. If we go into the team, I'm not going to pin anyone this year. We're just going to quick pick without restriction our best 11. And this is how we're looking going into the year. Ramsey is still here, knocking about, doing the business. Uh, Berger looks fantastic in that midfield position position despite the fact that it's saying a two and a half star for him as a roman playmaker he still does he just looks great he just looks really really good big fan of him attribute wise bakioko spilladon are gonna fight out with uh Khalifi as well on this right hand side to be an interesting uh trio behind the striker and then lele hopefully he can continue with his golden boot antics from last season because despite us having a shocking year he was actually very very good now competitions wise now i thought i know what you're saying steve i thought you said you were going to be in the conference league this year well so did i so did i ladies and gentlemen until nuremberg won the bloody pokal meaning that we got booted out because if we have a look at the stages from last year we were expected to go into the conference league nuremberg won the pokal from ninth meaning they go into the europe league and the positions get shuffled around so leverkusen went into the conference league and we missed out but that does allow us to focus solely on the league this year uh, and if we go into the competitions tab the border wanting mid table they want a quarter final in the pokal as well which considering when we won it we've been pretty poor since um if we have a look at the season preview uh 50 to 1 to win the title um we're still in that realm we're predicted to finish 10th i'm hoping with the lack of other fixtures this year we really 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 can push on in the bundesliga and hopefully push our way into those top four positions if we can My sole focus this season was the Bundesliga, which meant heavy rotation in the Pokal, and we paid the price for that, losing at home in the second round to Oldsburg. But the last thing I wanted this year was extra fixtures. But with all that being said, we had a catastrophic start to the league campaign, losing our first four games of the season after stopping the rock with a 1-1 draw with RB Leipzig. We were able then to recover and go on an 11 game unbeaten run to push that initial start firmly to the back of our minds. It was familiar faces as our standout performers this season as Florian Spiridon was the club's top goal scorer with 15 goals. However, it was also a great debut season for Johan Bakayoko as he was our assist leader this campaign with 11 assists after his move from RB Leipzig. After the winter break, we came back as a completely rejuvenated team, winning our first four games in a row, including a 3-2 win against Bayern at home. We did stutter a little bit in the second half of the season, but definitely put in a better performance than we have done previously at this time in the campaign. And this season, we were rewarded with a top four finish and our pathway into the Champions League for the first time in this save. Granted, we were miles off eventual winners RB Leipzig, finishing 22 points adrift of them. But I'm looking for positives here, and we will be playing in the Champions League next year. I achieved my goal for this season, but sadly, I didn't feel rewarded by the board, who only gave me a transfer budget of £14.5 million. But when you consider that we've got the 12th largest wage budget in the division, you can see that we are drastically punching above our weight. And Bayern Munich's wage budget is almost 6 
times ours. So you can see the disparity that we are trying to fight against. So guys, this is the final transfer window in this video, season number 10. One player left for £1.7 million. Lucas um, was a player who we did pick up, didn't really make any impact at all. We sold him for almost double the profit. Uh, so good money spent on him, the Wonder Kid Finder. Doesn't necessarily always find the best players, but it definitely finds you players that you can sell on for profit. That is for sure. And speaking of the Wonder Kid Finder, we spunked all of our money, 12.7 million, uh, 12.75 million pounds on this man, Glayson Nazato. He has all the attributes of a very good striker. Apart from finishing, he has eight finishing. So we're going to try him this year to see if finishing makes a difference. Physically, he's a monster. 17 off the ball, good technique as well, good composure. He has everything a good striker needs except from finishing. He's now valued at 34 to 37 million pounds. And I'm hoping he can go on to have a good season for us. Um, signing a Brazilian striker, what could go wrong, right? Uh, if we go over to the best 11, sorry, the best 11, the team, uh, Natazo is going to come straight in as our striker as i mentioned bakioka we're going to pin on this right hand side and escobar is going to continue as our center back last time around i mentioned if he didn't score five goals uh we'd be failing we failed in the first season he got four in the second season so we really need to do better from him from corners but these are the three guys we're going to be pinning into their positions for the season and uh natazo uh nazato i'm hoping can be that talismanic striker, him and Lele, the two Brazilians, are going to kind of battle it out for those two positions. But uh, big fans of those. Obviously, we enter into the Champions League for the first time. The Champions League money coming in is going to be very, very good for our bank balance. The border expecting a quarter final in the Pokal. They just want us to be competitive in the league. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in the Champions League. I want us to get into the knockout phases if we possibly can. I would consider that a win in our first season. And the board want that top half. Uh, finish in the Bundesliga. We've had three different winners over the last three seasons, Bayern, Dortmund, and then Leverkusen. Why don't we make it four in four, right? We are 50 to one to win the title. We're predicted to finish in ninth again. I'm hoping we can do better than that. I want at least a minimum of top four. Ideally, if we can push on and maybe challenge for the title, we need to have everything just right in this one. But I'm hoping for a good campaign in season number four. But I'm liking how diverse this Media Dream 11 is now. It's not just all by Munich players, which is really, really nice to see. Let's simulate our 10th and final season. So guys, I'm sure this video at this point is going to be over an hour long and I want to let you guys know that I appreciate you so, so much if you are still here watching this an hour in. You guys are the real MVPs. And if you are still here, let me know down in that comment section by just commenting the emoji of the German flag. That's all I want to see. People will kind of you know cotton on and get get it eventually uh, but i'm looking forward to seeing what you guys can say it, with that because i'm looking forward to seeing how many flags there are basically because i think it could be a fair few because you guys are loyal viewers of these videos and i really really do appreciate it but anyway thank you so much i appreciate it Let's get into season number 10's results. Our Bundesliga campaign in 2032 started with defeat on the road against Werder Bremen before securing six wins in a row against the likes of RB Leipzig and Bayern Leverkusen. After such a positive start, we struggled with consistency in the league and I am attributing that largely down to the extra Champions League fixtures within our schedule. Summer signing Gladson Nazato was our top goal scorer this season but only managed a return of 18 goals in 51 appearances so you can kind of see what our problem was this campaign. He is, however, now wanted by Al Hilal in Saudi Arabia and is valued at 41 to 44 million pounds, so that could be a good potential payoff for him. Another key man for us was now longtime servant Florian Spiridon, who gave us our highest average rating this season of 7.08 in all competitions in his sixth full season with the club. But sadly for us, the second half of this season was absolute litter. After winning our first two games post-winter break against Bayern and RB Leipzig, we were then terrible for the remainder of the campaign to slump all the way into a 10th place finish in the Bundesliga. Our worst finish for over four seasons. As I mentioned earlier, I attributed this largely down to the extra fixtures in the Champions League, and we actually put in a good showing in the league phase, winning four of our eight fixtures, including a nice 4-1 win against Dortmund. Those results saw us achieve a 16th place finish in the table with 13 points, and saw us face a playoff knockout round fixture where we would take on Real Sociedad. 
We travelled to Spain for the first leg and opened up a narrow 1-0 lead thanks to a powerful finish from Natazo inside the penalty area. The game back in Germany was a lot more interesting in terms of goals, but we were able to come out on top again thanks to Natazo backing a brace in a 3-2 win on the night. That aggregate result saw us move into the round of 16, where we would face another Spanish side in the face of Barcelona. This one was a little more tricky as we took on the Catalan side at home in the first leg and effectively got defeated by a German as Noah Darvic scored a goal in each half to give Barca the lead. Axel Atum did score a consolation goal for us, but I knew it was virtually an impossible task at the new Camp to overcome this. And I turned out to be correct as Barcelona decimated us on the night with a 5-0 win with Noah Darvic bagging another two goals. But I think you can see that the disparity between ourselves and Barcelona financially is pretty clear for everyone to see. Season 10 saw us have our best Pokal performance since we won the trophy in Season 7, advancing through the first few ranks with relative ease. We then faced Kaiser Schlauten in the quarterfinals and we took the lead from the spot thanks to Mariba, but another fallen giant of Germany scored a goal of their own just before half time to pull level. But in the second half, that Brazilian Nazato popped up on the hour mark to secure our pathway into the semi finals. Here we'd face Werder Bremen, and despite dominating large spells of the game, the tie went to extra time where we sadly just ran out of steam. Bremen added two goals in the extra 30 minutes and we were just unable to muster anything to see our Pokal journey come to an end. So in this rebuild, we've managed to win a DFL Super Cup, a DFB Pokal and return 1860 to the Champions League from German football's third tier. But would you consider that a success? If you wanted to continue this save, you can do. All the files are going to be posted over on my Patreon for you guys to access and continue this journey. And thank you so much if you are still here. If you do want to watch more rebuild content, check out this playlist. It's all the rebuilds that we've done on this year's game.